Zoroastrian prophecy, they call it Frasho Kareti. And they describe that the sun gives off this huge flash of light and energy, and that the wicked are consumed by the flames, but that the righteous are transfigured by it. So it seems that depending on what your karma is, you either have a negative, very negative experience, a neutral experience where you don't feel anything painful, or a tremendous positive experience where you go through ascension. So it's not like everybody on earth, unless they're ascending, is going to become a crispy critter and go through this terrible experience. But it does appear that the people who do not ascend are, without being hurt, they are relocated to another planet. And that may very well be something that they go through in a highly conscious way, involving actually boarding motherships and being transported to other planets. There is a lot about this in ancient religious prophecy, and it gets a lot more technically detailed in the Law of One. In other words, if you're not ready to be in a state of real, loving consciousness, service to others, then you don't get to stay on the Earth as it goes through this. So when you look at all the upsetting things that are going on with the Earth now, these terrible, distressing problems, that is part of the wake-up call to decide whether you are hot or cold. Because remember, there's a quote in the Bible, if you are lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. You have to decide what side you're on here. And remember that in the cosmic disclosure material that Corey brought to us, in December 2014, the Cabal tried to shoot at one of these spheres that's intended to protect our solar system as we go through this change. And they shot at it with a beam that could have potentially destroyed it that seems to be in the weird world of free will and authorization that you hear about in the Law of One, that authorized the sphere to then redirect the beam back to the people who shot it and actually blew up their base. And after that happened, which was visible on the International Space Station, remember we see this red circle where the sphere is and a red beam where the laser is. And in fact, NASA had to actually say, oh yeah, we were testing to try to create a fake planet with lasers from a telescope. No, that's not what it was. This was their cover story, which they quickly got rid of to cover up this amazing event that took place because they were hoping that that sphere was going to blow, and by having it in front of the ISS, they were going to get a nice film of it, which, if it was so big that they didn't want us to see it, they would have just disappeared the footage. But that's not what happened. Instead, not only does it go back and blow up the people that shot at the sphere, but then this clamp comes down around our entire solar system where nobody can get in, nobody can get out, not even radio communications can get in or get out. Now, that doesn't seem to make much of a difference to us because we're landbound here on Earth. But in the world of the secret space program, it is of huge significance because they've already had the technology to travel well outside our solar system and back. And furthermore, the reptilian Dracos, who are actually based in our solar system to a large degree in the moon and in Antarctica, they typically are out there trying to conquer other worlds using the Earth as like a home base with the help of the Nazis from World War II that have continued on in the secret occult Fourth Reich. Well, guess what? Most of them were not in our solar system when this boundary went up. The small remnant that was still here are isolated from everybody else, but that was the high command. That was the central organizing force, the real tip of the eye of the pyramid, if you will, of this satanic command system. And so what happens is they are stuck here. And why did Corey end up having meetings with the tall 14-foot white reptilian, the highest royal of the reptilian caste? Why did Corey get brought up to this guy and have the guy asking the Benevolent beings, the Elohim, please let us go. Please let us leave the solar system. We'll do anything. This is exactly like what happened in the book of Enoch, where the fallen angels asked the Elohim to be spared the Atlantean catastrophe because they knew, they were told, that the earth was going to have this epic disaster that would utterly ruin their land, which is now Antarctica. At the time, was a tropical area. Corey's latest expeditions to Antarctica that he's been on, according to what we've heard in Cosmic Disclosure, have said that they found palm trees, 
and they found prehistoric animals and architecture in Antarctica. Architecture that looks like things like Pumapunku, with these weird H-shaped stone blocks in Mesoamerica. So it appears that Antarctica was the central base of the reptilians and of their warring counterparts, the what we call pre-Adamites now. There's various names for them, the giants, the fallen angels, the Nephilim, whatever. They have elongated skulls. They were originally taller. They cloned themselves out. They landed here 55,000 years ago, spread across the earth, and set up what we now call the Illuminati. They've been wiped out in a cat catastrophe 50,000 years ago, the great flood that Casey talks about, another one 25,000 years ago. Wait a minute. This sounds like the times of the 25,000-year cycle. Exactly. Every time the 25,000-year cycle comes to an end, poof, the sun gives off this big flash of energy, and there's cataclysmic activity on Earth. The, e the ETs, the good guys, both out in space and in the inner Earth, and this is all the cosmic disclosure and law of one stuff, if they like you, then they will make sure that you get through this just fine. You don't experience tidal waves. You don't experience earthquakes or super volcanoes or whatever the heck happens. They keep you safe. But those people who had taken over the Earth, the pre-Adamites, the Illuminati, the Nephilim, the fallen angels, they don't get rescued. They got wiped out 50,000 years ago, 25,000 years ago, and again in the fall of Atlantis, the most recent one, in which the Earth finally actually tilted on its axis. And then Antarctica, which was tropical, becomes Arctic. And the water that floods over that land freezes and turns into a glacier that's three and a half miles deep. But we still have the surviving maps that show what it looks like underneath the ice, suggesting they were made before this catastrophe took place some estimate 12,400 to 500 years ago, thereabouts. So this is big, big stuff because